Uh-oh. Hello everyone. Just trying to pin as usual the comment the topic I mean so that I can invite my guest. Bear with me guys. Uh -huh. Uh-huh, yes. Okay, great. Okay, let's see. Hello, hello. Wait a second, wait a second. I don't hear you. Hello. Do you hear me? Yes, I heard you. See? Yes. Hola, ¿qué tal? Bien. ¿Cómo estás, David? Bien, bien. Good morning. To... Good morning. How are you? Great. I'm good, I'm good. I'm, it's 1 p.m. here in Spain, waiting for my vermouth time, <laughs> just before dinner, uh, before lunch. Ah, Irene, I'm here with a port topic. Wow, amazing. I'm at the moment, I'm with water. Because I'm going to listen to you and then prepare my vermouth. <laughs> that is really amazing. This uh, white port with mm -hmm. pinoceri, with pink, mm -hmm. a little bit touch and, and super nice uh, tonic. Okay, great. Tonic. I think we have a little bit of delay in connection. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. Can everyone hear us well, guys? So let us know in the comments if you can hear us well. Okay. Ah, Mix and Travel says, David, today no Rosita. I lost you. What is Rosita? Sorry? I, I can't hear you. Yeah, um, there is a comment. Mix and Travel says, David, today no Rosita. Ah, no, no, no. Rosita was last, last uh, in, the, in the, one of the last uh, lives. I love ah, it okay. because uh, Rosita is a combination with uh, bitterness and two different vermouths and, uh, and tequila. I love mm -hmm. it. Borja, what okay. You? My friend from okay. oh, my dear bro. Ah, nice. And actually, I see some people also joining from Turkey, from Istanbul. So I will first start with our uh, how we met, how uh, we met you and I, and then we can start with the topic. Sure. So guys, start when you when you okay. So you are the boss. <laughs> Thank you. And then when we start talking, you will be the boss because you're the expert and I'll be learning a lot from you. Sure, um, so welcome everyone. Today I'm with David Rios. He's the global bartending champion, a sherry wine educator, so on, so on. He will tell us about himself. Uh, and we will be talking about wine and how to use wine in cocktails. Uh, he's, he's at the moment, he's based in Bilbao, in the north of Spain, and I'm in Barcelona. But David and I, we met five years ago in Turkey, in Istanbul. I was, I, back then, I was living in New York, but I was in Turkey for visiting my family, friends. And a good friend of mine, Asla, took me to a nice place, uh, a bar. It's called um, Room and Rumors. I think it doesn't exist now. It was in Nishantash, Istanbul. And then David was doing a live show there. So actually we met over the counter of the bar. <laughs> and then since then we kept in touch. And today he's, he was so nice to accept my invite. And then we are doing this live session together. So nice introduction. <laughs> uh, yes, what's, uh, that's, that's a beautiful thing in life, right? When you make yeah like three, four, six, seven, eight years ago, and the, the, the relationship is still, no, together and many times talk about always wines, no, because you are mm -hmm. a super expert in wines and uh, I was a sommelier before. As I told you, mm -hmm. um, I work uh, as a sommelier in Mugaric restaurant, no, and then more yeah. 
but everybody knows Mugaritz, one of the yeah. restaurants in the world in the last 14 years, no? And, and you know that I, I'm, I'm super happy to, to be here right now with you and with all the people that, uh, that join us and uh, watching our life about wines and cocktails. Uh, mm -hmm. Because uh, for me, it's, uh, co uh, wines, uh, there are always in my life, uh, there are wines in my life. And then in the last 10 years or 15 years, no, when, when, uh, when you have to create cocktails, always in my mind, I start to think in wines before. Yeah. So mm -hmm. then we are going to explain why, no? Because I think it's, it's, it is like a common sense, no? It's like normal that you mm -hmm. start to think in like, uh, for example, things like temperature, glass. So this is, for example, a, a reader glass. So it's mm -hmm. okay. you are going to drink your cocktail in the, I don't know, the normal glass, like, no, come on. So the idea is to use the, the perfect glass, the perfect temperature, and the perfect aroma. So mm -hmm. that I have a lot of aromas behind me. That's the, another uh, project uh, that I have. No, is uh, my memories. It's called my memories by Debbie Rios. It's a lot of aromas coming from the wine world as well. So mm -hmm. aromas that to use in food or use in cocktails, mm -hmm. but always thinking in wines before, no? Wines, yeah, okay. And I have a question for you. So uh, you, how many years have you been in this uh, cocktail and wine industry in this world? So I, I'm, I'm working in the hospitality world more than 20 years. So mm -hmm. you know that in Bilbao or, that, um, or Basque country or Spain or many countries that, 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 that we have a lot of strong culture about the wines. But mm -hmm. when I started in, uh, in, in Bilbao, my career, it was nothing about cocktails, just few guys uh, making uh, cocktails, no? John, uh, John Alastra from uh, Lecatio from Basque Country as well. Uh, hi, John. A lot of people that, people that make cocktails in San Sebastian or in Bilbao, but few guys. So, mm -hmm. so, that is 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 a hundred percent true. No, when the people ask me about when you started your career, so perdona, John. Yes, Garnica, like I say, like oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, cabrón. Uh, and I always say like, no, no. We started like as a manager to serve mm -hmm. beers and wines because wines, you know, this in, in thirty minutes you can go to Rioja, you can go to to uh, Rioja La Besa, no? So, so wines are really strong and Vermouth, mm -hmm. Vermouth is a wine base. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But no, not too many people know th that Ver Vermouth is a wine base. It is wine base. And actually I have here a Marc de Cava. Marc de Cava is also a wine based or let's say Grappa. Grappa is also wine based. But there are a lot of, a lot of, for example, no, if you, because it's we, like a, if we start to talk about different wines, we need like a, ten hours of, ma, of uh, like exactly <laughs> two, two, th three days, no? But, yeah. But for example, no, I think it's really easy to create cocktails, uh, mm -hmm. fortified wines, mm -hmm. because it's, a, it's not easy to make cocktails with uh, dry white wine or red wine. It's, it's a little bit more difficult, no? But for example, with fortified wines. That's mm -hmm. the cocktails, no? Because I think it's more alcohol. Is uh, the the notes is really easy to 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 mix. Mm -hmm. so, but we have a lot of uh, examples in our, in our history about our cocktail history that it's really interesting because not too many people make cocktails with wines now in the last mm -hmm. year, but not ten years or fifteen years ago. But if you try to uh, discover products or so, sorry products uh, uh, mm -hmm. from the beginning from the, our history you you discover cocktails like port flipped like uh, mm -hmm. cobbler like uh, adonis cocktail. port port tonic you no know, like gin tonic port flip flip is a is a kind of family in cocktails with egg so for mm -hmm. port fleet flipped mm -hmm. from 19 sorry 1887 so, wow, 1887. 
Seven is cognac or brandy, uh, towny port, egg and sugar, mm -hmm. made or something like this, no? So do, you can imagine, but we have Adonis is from 1887. 1887. Mm -hmm. 1887 is Paul Flip. Adonis is from... How do, you, how do you spell Flip? Flip. Is a F L A P flip flip F L E P flip is a is a is a family family of a, ah okay family sour or I don't know sangre there are a lot of families like Collins like fish so for mm -hmm. Terry Cobbler mm -hmm. the combination of well Adonis is a vermouth and fino sherry sherry okay and mm -hmm. so that's unbelievable cocktail that's a, it is an amazing aperitif. No, mm -hmm. but then, for example, yeah. Terry Cobbler is a is a combination of uh, fresh fruits with fino sherry and uh, lime juice and uh, or orange juice, something like this, and no more. Mm -hmm. Terry is from 1862, so maybe it's the oldest cocktail in our history. So that's mm -hmm. but uh, another point. For, uh, there are another cocktail from 17. Mm -hmm. I think it's from the in the beginning of the 17th. So it's a Madeira, mm -hmm. old tone gin and sugar. Madeira. One. Wow. So it's Madeira one. You, you can imagine it's from uh, yeah. around uh, 1736, uh, something like this. So, but then we have a lot of uh, hot wines, mm -hmm. a lot of spices in the north of Europe. So this is really yeah. Cool. So wines and cocktails that oh, is like brothers for me, no? Mm -hmm. so that's really really interesting. And one of the most uh, in well, then we have. Uh, I know that you live uh, before in New York. Yes. Uh, then we have <laughs> the oldest cocktails as well with wine, with red wine. Mm -hmm. in this case is New York sour. It's I have never heard of it before. You know, it's unbelievable. <laughs> Imagine that's a. Uh, uh, regular or, or, or whiskey sour is a uh -huh. bourbon in this case or rye, or rye whiskey uh, with lemon, sugar, egg white if you want and uh, yeah. wine or claret. So, claret. Okay. Is it is it like a variation of pisco sour no. or which one was first? New York sour is, is the, the old, the, the first recipe it was with another uh -huh. thing. Because I think that there was they created in Chicago and then moved. Okay. The move in New York was like wow, super trend. But it was from 1880. So mm -hmm. wow, 1880. Jerry Thomas book from 1880. So you can imagine then as a, I don't know because it, this is a this is a, the people fight about the it was the the pisco sour was before the or, the, <laughs> or you know this you know. This is a, no, it's not, it's not interesting for us. If we were fighting. Yeah. <laughs> fighting, yeah. <laughs> then, for example, uh, we are in Spain, no? So, mm -hmm. not sangria. Exactly. See, because we have sangria. Sangria is like a, it's like a, a punch, uh, punch cocktails, no? So, you, mm -hmm. uh, we, in, in, we, we can use a lot of different wines white, red, late harvest, sweet wines, ice wines, sparkling wines. So that's mm -hmm. unbelievable. That's a great opportunity for us to create cocktails. And now at home, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, there was a question. Leila from Turkey, Istanbul, she was asking, David, can you give us some examples that we can do for the house parties? Uh, yeah, maybe you can, you can also tell us what we can do at home, you know? Yeah, this is a really good example. You can, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, sherry wines or port wines and mm -hmm. different tonics, lemon peel, and you have a, an a incredible cocktail at home. So, so it is just you put, that one is sherry or port, white port? This is white port. White port. Yes, with a little bit touch of sherry wine as well. Yes, a little bit touch because I love sherry wines as well. But you can use mm -hmm. only white port and then... It's a tonic, the tonic that you want. In this case, I, uh, I use a grapefruit tonic. So, okay. Um, but then you can you can change and you can use, for example, instead tonic, you can put uh, uh, sparkling wines. Mm -hmm. Champagne, why not? If if you want, um, we, we we can talk about a few examples with uh, wines. Yes, please. 
So first and actually, before before talking about that, I just want to ask you a question. Uh, lately, there is also uh, because before there was a comment as well about Saint Sebastian, and then uh, someone said that best tapas in my life, Saint Sebastian. Um, so they, lately, actually, I think uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe last five years or so, there is this trend also to have cocktails with the food. Not only having the cocktails like before dinner or after, like or for party. You can also have cocktails or uh, spirits when you are having food when you are eating. So maybe it can be also an ex- influence of cocktails made wi- wi- uh, with wine, or is is it totally a different trend? No, no, no. I think it's it's, it's again it's really close and 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 it is is. Thank you for the question because it's a really nice question because you know. That is another trend in the last years. So we. Ah, oh, by the way, sorry, Laura, Laura Duran just joined, and also Miguel Angel from Torres uh, just joined. Hi, Laura. Hi, Miguel. Laura, you know, <laughs> you know that in the last years, so we when we started the crazy trends or the the cocktail war in in, in general, know everybody start to create uh, cocktails in all the bars and blah blah blah. <coughs> sorry. Um, for example, after the cocktails. A lot of people and the chefs, mm-hmm. and they say, "Okay, I want to create food pairing dinners with cocktails, mm-hmm. for example." No, so but yesterday I, I explained a little bit about this thing because it was a, another live from Brazil, and they asked me about more or less the same uh, question. No, so for me, if you go to the restaurant and mm-hmm. and you want to create food. With cocktails, that's a little bit difficult because the normal guests, the regular guests, they are not familiar with cocktails and food. So you can imagine mm-hmm. super nice, uh, I don't know, fish or amazing meat, mm-hmm. whiskey. Let's say uh, the, you, your first thing is like, no way, no way, amigo, no, thank you very much, but no, I prefer red, mm-hmm. wine, super strong red wine because it's a, you know the meat and. You know these kind of things, no? So, mm-hmm. in my in my uh, mind, when I started to create food pairings for many b- restaurants, Don amigo, Don Carala, <laughs> with many people, I do. So I th- I was thinking that okay, first point, you have to impact your guests, and you have to mm-hmm. to make something familiar for your guests because it's it's not there are no professional people. So, because this is one of the more the, 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 the worst mistake in the uh, for the bartenders right now in the world, because the, the bartenders think that everybody understand our cocktails, and ninety nine percent of the people in the restaurant and on the bars are regular mm-hmm. normal people. So nobody understand our crazy things. So mm-hmm. the first point is try to make cocktails that will be a little bit really familiar with the guests. So if you use wines in your cocktails, so and you start your explanation, your uh, when you um, when you explain your cocktail in the restaurant, you start with wines in your mm-hmm. you are thinking that is wine with food. Mm-hmm. You can you can you can I don't know you can uh, uh, use uh, gin or whiskey or vodka or different uh, liqueurs. Pisco is a wine base as well, so they're really nice. It's a grape from grapes. So then I'm going to explain one cocktail that I use in uh, South Korea in 2014 in the food uh, food pairing dinner it was a mm-hmm. dinner, and I use for meat I use whiskey, Pedro Simena sherry, Angostura bitters, and I smoke with a kind of wood. And I'm going to explain this cocktail right wow. now. So, and the, Great. No, the, you can imagine because in the beginning you are really scared because you don't know, mm-hmm. you, you think that, oh, maybe the people, they don't understand. And it's in South Korea. So it's a mm-hmm. in your, uh, that you visited this country and they say, baby, you have to create a food pairing dinner in mm-hmm. the restaurant. You in the middle of the restaurant, like a rock star, you make the cocktails for everybody, for 20 guys, special guys, no? Mm-hmm. There's people that they, they, they have a lot of knowledge. So it was really difficult. It was a big challenge for me, but it was one of the most amazing experience in my life. So the people, when finished the dinner, was like, everybody was applauding to me. They said, applause, applause. They say, what? Incredible. Because 
the meat with the with the whiskey and better semen and said it was the, first, the, the the most amazing balance what but mm. one year later it was in 2015 in madrid in a, another uh, amazing uh, food pairing dinner i created it was i was thinking that, oh this cocktail was perfect in south korea i'm going to make the same cocktail with a, diff, with a, a few details and you can imagine but, everybody was like what's this <laughs> i say what and the people in madrid they told me hey, hey david i want more the cocktail with pineapple with mint with a yeah. lot of sugar so that's really interesting how is that the palate or oh, oh, mm -hmm. different countries or so different cultures so for example mm -hmm. Argentina people are really familiar with bitterness Eat mm -hmm. it, no? so that's really interesting that when you have to create cocktail with wines first you have to know the people know that your guest so mm -hmm. Really interesting. So but... exactly, yeah. It changes the taste and the preferences change from person to person, but also it changes from the culture to culture as well. Like for example, let's say um, I'm originally from Turkey, right? So in Turkey, the Turkish restaurant, the Turkish food, uh, the way we cook the food, it's not really compatible or it's not really appreciated from Spanish palate. So all the Turkish restaurants here, they're kind of adjusting themselves to Spanish palates. It's not the same. And then people, when go to Tur they go to Turkey, they kind of think that, okay, this is not what we eat normally, you know? It's, it's, all, it's, it's very interesting, yeah? Yeah, but it's like when you work as a sommelier, no, is that more or less the same? You have, you have to ask your guests and try to, I don't know, mm -hmm. understand your guests, uh, the, the, I don't know, the, his palate and everything, no? Because it's like, okay, This is the food. This is, I don't know, the 13 different uh, dishes. And then mm -hmm. our guests is always ask about, okay, I want just one bottle of wine that is perfect with uh, 13 different dishes. Mama. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. No. And actually now we are just having Mayur uh, joining from India. Uh -huh. He says, hi, David, love from India. And actually Indian food is like kind of, it's normally very, depending actually where you are in India, Uh, but it's kind of spicy, you know, it's like there's so much uh, spices that they use. Uh, so normally with that spicy cocktails, I, I would say a mild, uh, sorry, spicy food, milder cocktail, or maybe a little bit on the sour or sweet touch will be a better balance, maybe, no? Yeah, because I, I'm, I'm not, believe me, I'm, 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 uh, I like a little bit touch of spices because, but not super spicy because India or Mexico as well, that's crazy. When you visit Mexico, it's like all the spices, like, and then for me, my palate is like flat. And mm -hmm. It's a little bit strong for me when you, the people use a lot of spices. But for example, uh, sherry wines, depends on, mm -hmm. the, the, we have a sherry wines that is really perfect balance with this kind of food, with the, with the mm -hmm. ginger, well, no? ginger, a lot of spices. If you use sherry wines, That's unbelievable as the Fino Serie as well, no? This is perfect. So it's like the combination is like super nice because all the spice is like, it's like fire in your mouth. That with the spice yeah. is like super dry. And it's like, it's a perfect combination, no? With the biologic, uh, uh, how do you say in English? Uh, uh, biologic, uh, ah, maturation uh, in solar system, but the biologic maturation, yeah. Yeah. Um, in english is uh, okay the, the... biologic biologic aging it's it's also solera in english but then you say biologic aging in solera the the floor the yeast the floor is exactly. after the floor mm -hmm. but this is a perfect combination yeah but this is uh, yeah i know that i remember a, a lot of friends that they, they competing in uh, india in 2011 in world class competition and it was terrible for many bartenders because they didn't know anything about the spices and you know that mm -hmm. uh, One of the challenges in uh, in this uh, world class competition is always market challenge. So you yeah. have, you have to go to the market and you have to make cocktails with the 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 the, the, the things that you find uh, in the market. No, so you can imagine in India a lot of spices. Mm -hmm. So the people then when they create the cocktails, what terrible cocktails it was. Was a lot mm -hmm. of so that's the point that is 
really important to know the products, to know the techniques, to know everything. Yeah. So, yeah. That's great. I think it's great. Two bus, two bus says, I love spicy cocktails. I also love spicy cocktails and I can be, I really like when I go to, um, uh you know craft made cocktail bar i always i i like to look at the menu but i also like to speak with the bartender and then telling that okay th explaining my palate and preference and asking what should i drink because i think nowadays it's really important there's so much choices yeah. and most of the things that you're not familiar with so i always ask for like not a very sweet cocktail i like something combination of sweet and and sorry sour and spicy so i always like ask for a, like a tailor made cocktail for myself yeah no but it is interesting because that's the the, the point that, that we were talking before no so you, first you have to know the 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 the, the palate of the, your guests but it's not mm -hmm. when you are working behind the bar and you have a lot of orders and people like you yeah you are expert i said <laughs> But a little bit sour, a little bit salt, a little bit this. Oh, my goodness. I don't know. Yeah, you hate people like me, I assume. <laughs> it's really terrible, no? It's like, a, oh, wait, okay. A twist of gin tonic with this and this. <laughs> uh, okay. That the point that, again, if you have knowledge about many products, about many techniques, is easy in theory is more easy to to create a cocktail a special cocktail like yeah it's a private cocktail like a special cocktail for you no? but mm -hmm. in the middle of the storm when you are working behind the bar it's not easy you know, to create a special cocktail for a special guest because mm -hmm. it's like again like like wines no if you i don't know this is your perfect wine for you <sighs> mamma mia it's, yeah exactly it's, there are that, but that's the beautiful part in our job because we have an incredible palette about mm -hmm. flavors and aromas and in the world. So every day, you discover new wines, or you discover new products, or you discover new aromatic herbs for to add or for to use in your cocktail. So that's unbelievable. So that's mm -hmm. really nice. Okay, there are two interesting questions that I want to ask you here from the guests. Nelson from Portugal asking how much impact wines will have in the future of cocktail industry considering the low, low alcohol trends. That's a very good question. Eh? That's a very good question, Nelson. Um, that's, it. again, another point that I love to use wine in my cocktails because right now everybody knows that it's a, it's a trend in the world, like low alcohol or, or less alcohol, and more easy to drink at home and for the mm -hmm. So, you know that when, when, when the people start to think, for example, in the classic cocktails, the classic cocktails in general was created well, around 100 years ago or in the Prohibition area. So it was total different um, palette mm -hmm. that we have right now. No? Uh, so if you start to think in the classic cocktail, there are really strong cocktails. But now, mm -hmm. I think, in my opinion, they want to enjoy with the cocktails. They want to, I don't know, to, to have fun with the cocktails. So that's that one of the reasons that is in the trend about the low alcohol. So if we use wines in our cocktails, it's super easy for the regular people to understand us. And at the same time, it's low alcohol. So again, this is an example. So, mm -hmm. if you use, I don't know, Oloroso, Montillado, or Port, mm -hmm. it's like, it's not 40% 40, 40, uh, alcohol, or 45, yeah. 35, it's mm -hmm. 15, it's 16, it's 20. Mm -hmm. This is perfect aperitif. Yeah. You have bubbles, you have acidity, and mm -hmm. I want more, believe me. So believe me, this is, when you when you drink something like this, it's like okay, I want more. So yeah, actually, that's also a good strategy. I'm talking on the trade side uh, for restaurants as well. I think it's always a good strategy to offer 
a low alcohol uh, aperitif cocktail. So then it make people to ask for more and then it make people to become hungry and then to want, you want to eat more, no? And also it's a palate cleanser. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's 100% I agree with you. So if you offer something that before lunch, something that mm -hmm. your mouth is say, okay, I want more and I want more. And at the same time, if you think in, not the, for example, not the, the size or the measure of it in Spain that for me is like too much. But if you, for example, use like different measures and you, you make like a different twist of a gin tonic or a sparkling aperitif um, with a different measure, that's unbelievable to start a lunch or the dinner. So that yeah. combination. And then it's a business as well because mm -hmm. you drink one too big, it's only one, but... Uh, But if you drink two or three, and at the same time it's less alcohol, it's perfect for you. It's healthy, but you, you are mm -hmm. drinking two or three cocktails, no one. So, no one. So I think it's really interesting for us for the future thinking wines because, again, if all the industry in general uh, working together, so mm -hmm. believable, no, no only great sommeliers in one part. Uh, metres in another part, uh, mixologists or bartenders in another part, people from the wine industry in another part, people from the spirit industry. No, come on. Chefs, mm -hmm. sommeliers, waiters, uh, mixologists. All together. Yeah, it's a blend. A combination so with mm -hmm. beers and coffee business as well. So it's a perfect combination because at the end of the day, it's a, it's a hospitality business. Exactly, yeah. I think right. um, thin sweet red wine is a really very good way with whiskey. With whiskey. To my friend. I, yeah. I heard that from Turkey, actually. He's from Turkey. Or no, it's like a whiskey sour with a little bit of red wine. So then you can yeah. choose the perfect red wine for you. More tannic, less tannic, like, you know, with a, in age barrel or no barrel. So that, that, this is up to you. But it's a perfect mm -hmm. And I totally agree with you. Okay, let's do this. Actually, I see uh, many questions here. Uh, let's answer one more question. And then from there, let's go to the action. And then if you have time, we'll come back to those questions. If not, we will uh, reply you guys later with uh, messages. One question from Gonja from Turkey. Gonja is actually, she's a regular and she watches all my sessions. Thank you, Gonja. Gonja is asking, what are the two kind of drinks that you never mix together in a cocktail? <laughs> wow. That's a good question. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> oh, la, la. So, mamma mia, that's an incredible question. First, I want to say obrigado to Nelson. Nelson is a really good friend for me. Now he's in Porto. Nelson. Ah, hi, Nelson. We'll come to visit you after this no, to Porto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's in Royal Club. This is an incredible bar in Porto. Nelson is in, he's an incredible bartender, a super friend of mine. So, Nelson, mm -hmm. we'll see you very soon. Uh, Together, together, you and me, with uh, we have to be in Nelson. Okay, um, promise. <laughs> so about the question, that's, oh, fuck. This is a really very good question, eh? You no, know, because... Um, uh, can I say, can, sorry, sorry, can I say my uh, per, uh, personal opinion, my answer to this question? I will never, two things, actually I have two. I will never ever mix uh, whiskey with Coca-Cola and then vodka and Red Bull. <laughs> never. Okay, next time I'm going to make a cocktail for you with whiskey and Coca-Cola and vodka and Red Bull. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, that's a challenge. You, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's really difficult because uh, when I think in, because I'm, I'm, you know that I'm judge, uh, judging uh, cocktail uh, competition as well in the world in general. Mm -hmm. And you can imagine when you, when you are a judge, You can see mm -hmm. the cocktails many a few times. The cocktails that you have to taste, so psh, it's like a psh, mamma mia. <laughs> so that's it. <laughs> you just start to see the color and the ingredients, and they say, uh, "Come on, guys, uh, please, I need help. I need to go <laughs> because." <laughs> so, I remember a few cocktails with. Um, It was a, you know, the julep. Julep is a, another kind of cocktail, like a, with a mint, a bourbon. It's like a, like a mojito, 
Uh, mm -hmm. Without a lime, it's like a julep. It's a old style as well, no? And I remember it was a twist of the julep. It was like a feta julep uh, cocktail. Feta with cheese. Yeah, but the people wow. have not. Sometimes that's good, but I remember uh, cocktails like this, no? When the people uh, mix, uh, in, you know that right now this is a really uh, it's a, another trend in the world. Like the people use fermentations and. But, you know, mm -hmm. pilus and kombuchas and many, many uh, ingredients like that. When you use in the right way, that's unbelievable. But many times the people use ingredients that, in my opinion, that are a, a little bit dangerous when mm -hmm. you work with fermentations and something like this. Uh, that's whew, sometimes, believe me, are terrible. When you have to taste cocktails like you, you just look the color and it's like everything is like separate it's not mixed and you just mm -hmm. smell it smell like things like i don't know how they say it really well in english but like like fermentation like it's not like ugh, like oh my goodness say no way but yeah. it, whatever you think you can say also in spanish eh? yeah, I'm, i'm sure someone will tell will translate it for us i don't know so but i i think uh, that we have to This is an, another advice or tip that in many master classes, when the people ask me about uh, these kind of questions, they always say, hey, guy, you mm -hmm. mix the cocktail, taste the cocktail, and then if you don't like it, okay, throw. But you have to taste because I remember um, many years, I love, for example, uh, uh, for my salad and for many many food, many dishes, uh, aceto balsamico. Mm -hmm. I love it. Vine yeah. Balsamic vinegar, no? Balsamic vinegar, like a, with like a creamy, no? It's like more, it's like a, a shrub. A shrub mm -hmm. combination with fruit, sugar, and, uh, and vinegar. It, it's mm -hmm. from Turkey, amiga. Ah, okay. I didn't know that. But, uh, well, I will explain you. That's really I, told, I thought it was from Italy originally. No, 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 no. It's wraps. It's wraps is coming uh -huh. from I don't know. It was like a, when you want to uh, to conserve the fruits, so uh -huh. for conserve the fruits, no, it's like a, uh, you put like the fruits that you want with sugar and with vinegar. Mm -hmm. Believable. This is one. Wow. Okay. Aperitif is one. Uh -huh. It's an aperitif. So that's unbelievable. So uh, Puma Ricardo, oh a nice amigo from Brazil. So. Hi Brazil. So, um, so they did. Ah, molasses. Shafak Korkut says, Hi Shafak, molasses. Yeah, it's actually, yeah, molasses. It's, I, I don't, I don't know. Molasses is like, molasses is like uh, in, in Spain. Uh, hi Robin. Uh, in Spanish, molasses, I think. Molasses, I don't know how to say molasses. It's like a, like a sh sugar cane uh, syrup. Yeah. No, no, that, mm -hmm. that's the, the theory. Is like, okay. If you combine vinegar, so it's for conservate the fruits. Say, mm -hmm. Like, I don't know, like uh, pff, many, many uh, dishes in the world, no? It's like sugar and fruits. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. ah, believe me, that's uh, one of the most, in ah, Dudi, Dudi says from Israel. Hey, daddy. Yeah, wow, we have people all around the world, huh? It's very nice. So that's the point, no? That working, you, for example, add, and you add this base, with the uh -huh. fruit that you want, and then you can add the wine that you want, and sparking, sparking wine, or I don't know, or tonic, or just uh -huh. different wines, and you have an incredible aperitif for the restaurant or for the bars. Uh -huh. Expensive. So that's, so we have, we have a lot of different combinations yes. of wines in the world. So that's, mm -hmm for us for me that's I'm, i'm very lucky because i love wines i love mm -hmm. all the things from wines and then the idea is to discover wines around the world um, mm -hmm. and use the, these wines in the cocktail so mm -hmm. really good thing it's really okay part of this in general okay uh shafak says not actually yeah in turkish not actually said thank you um okay let's do this Uh, Anna, my uh, Anna, and what was the name? Uh, Mayur. I see your questions. We will get back to them. If not, I'll make sure to write you with the answers. But let's do 
action. Yeah, just one second. So can you, okay. Yeah, no, I'm going to make a cocktail right with a different, uh, super nice cocktail, really, really nice cocktail to aperitif cocktail. So that's a perfect moment to aperitif in Spain, I don't know, in the rest of the world. But then before just, I'm going to explain super fast mm -hmm. uh, things that I explained in, in my masterclass, when the cocktail masterclass with wines, no? For example, I have a, uh, this is really interesting about, for example, different glasses, no? Mm -hmm. it was, I made this many, many times, and you can imagine your guess. For example, when you use two different, in a gin and tonic, the same, mm -hmm. tonic, the same gin and tonic, the same garnish, the same uh, gin, the same tonic, but in two different glasses. One glass was Pinot Noir glass, 7 mm -hmm. ml, and another glass is Chardonnay glass from Riedel glass, okay? Yeah. And you can imagine, you make the, the same gin tonics, and when the people start to taste, they say, the Pinot Noir start to say, wow, wow that's uh, really good, but it's too strong. It's a mm -hmm. alcohol. And you, and you start to think, fuck, this is the same gin tonic. And with the people with the Chardonnay, you know, Chardonnay is more, the, uh, the, the, the mouth is more open. Mm -hmm. With the Chardonnay, the people start to say, oh, I love this gin tonic because it's like less alcohol. It's more easy to drink. So that's really interesting that you use different glass for the different cocktails because it's not the same. Organolect mm -hmm. is not the same a glass like the, the, the mouth is really, I don't know, closed and it's, or, or, or open, you know, no? So that's a really nice point for the bartenders. Think in the glass, mm -hmm. really important yeah. for, the, for the days, no? Then, for example, the idea to create cocktails, first thinking wines and then in co uh, cocktails, okay? For, mm -hmm. uh, looking for, uh, for example, for the molecular collections or the aromatic uh, connections, no? Wow, <laughs> I'm gonna write this. Molecular connections and aromatic connections. Yeah, it's like you know that then in the in the pairing we have for for uh, for um, how do you say for um, uh, for the contracts or for uh, mm -hmm. or for um, how do you say uh, similar? No? Compare and uh, yeah, compare and contrast. No, but in this case, mm -hmm. for example, this is really nice. No, in this case, I start to think in first in wood, oak, barrels, and then, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oak. And then start to think in wines that age in barrels. No? Okay. And start, for example, in general, no? They start to analyze, analyze the wines, and they start to think in vanilla, coconut, spices, cloth, pepper, cinnamon, apples, maple syrup, I don't know, toast, coffee, dry nuts, flowers, I don't know. A lot of things that, that, that taste in wines that age in barrels. In mm -hmm. all the kind of barrels in general. So, this is the first part. Analyze wines. Second part, we are going to analyze spirits, liqueurs, etc. that age in barrels as well. Like rum, cachazas, uh, tequila, vermouth, whiskies. Okay? In this case... I'm going to analyze two different whiskies from a spy side, from Highlands, mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. France, okay? And I start to analyze the first whiskey. When I taste it, I discover pear, apple, nuts, hazelnuts, spices, wood, orange, toasted, a little bit of smoke, mm -hmm. Spanish sherry wine cask. It is, oh my goodness. So the second whiskey, honey, Raisins, vanilla, apple, pure, wood, smooth, it's again, Spanish sherry wine cask, oloroso in general. So then the combination is really easy. If you start to think, okay, okay this is the one. Mm -hmm. Clove, pepper, cinnamon, whiskey, nuts, hazelnut, spices, smoking. So you have really, really it's a, it's a perfect combination it's about molecular connections. That's really nice. So mm -hmm. this is, for example, the first example. I start to think in port wine. Tony mm -hmm. port wine, 10 years. Analyze the port wine. 
fruity, fresh, cherry, jam, creamy, dry fruit, chocolate, nuts. Well, perfecto. Then I'm going to use bourbon in this case. Vanilla, honey, praline, caramel, pepper, clove, combination is the same. Then cherry herring liqueur. Cherry herring is cherry liqueur. Spices because it aids in uh, barrels for five years. Again, but mm -hmm. and then I'm going to use cherry and vanilla bitter. This is a half a cocktail. No, that's unbelievable. Wow. Right? Yeah, we have a master class here by, by David. Thank you, David. <laughs> Another example, example that I, I, I explained before. I start with Pedro Ximena's sherry. Uh -huh. You know that many, many, many sherries that we have, many Pedro Ximenez in, in, sorry, in this case, uh, that we have more than 450 um, grams sugar per liter. So it's like, yeah. so many times I use like a syrup, you know? So, that, uh -huh. so I start to analyze Pedro Ximenez's sherry with dates, figs, honey, I don't know, coffee, chocolate, 200 millions of things. And then yeah. we are going to use a whiskey from Spice whiskey from the Highlands. Apple, spices, fig, vanilla, dry fruits. Again, the same connections. And, goes to, mm -hmm. and then I use, I smoke it with a kind of wood. It's aya, it's beets, beets in English, with coffee, mm -hmm. with coffee beans. Mm -hmm. The perfect combinations. And the last, and then I'm going to make a cocktail. The last, okay. I love this cocktail as well. It's one of my favorites. I start with champagne. In this case, wow. Okay. You mm -hmm. have the champagne. A lot of bubbles, intense, apple, wood, floral, citric, briots, butter, a little bit uh, bitterness, fresh, very good acidity. Okay, perfecto. Then I'm going with use tequila, tequila blanco, fresh, citric, lemon, lime, grapefruit, uh, herbal, spices, pepper. It's the same connections. And then I'm going to use, for to, to add a little bit more floral, uh, Saint Germain is a elderflower liqueur. Mm -hmm. Again, is floral, lychees, grapes, Really nice acidity with sweetness is perfect. Agave, caramel, and lime acidity, and champagne. Mm -hmm. Fresquito cocktail. That's unbelievable cocktail. Amazing. <laughs> I think how many things we can do with wines and then with cocktails. So mm -hmm. really good. So now, if you okay, great, uh, David. Just a second. Uh, there's 13 minutes to complete the hour. Otherwise, Instagram will kick us out. So let's do this. 13 minutes. 13 minutes. One, three. Okay. 13 minutes. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's say bye to everyone at the moment and then do the cocktail and finish. And sorry, guys, we couldn't answer the questions. But uh, after the session... I will talk to David and make sure that you have the answers and we all send you as a message. So, but if, stop it. No, 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 now you can go do, do the cocktail. Yeah. Thank you so much, David. And let's do the cocktail. Last 12 minutes. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I think that maybe you can. Uh, it's upside down, David. Here? Yeah, now better. Yeah? Okay. Yes, great. I don't know, tell me, I'm here. Okay, we see you. Everyone sees David well. Great, perfect. Super nice. So, Super. So I'm going to make a cocktail that is, is called uh, Queen Juanita. Okay. A Reina Queen Juanita. Juanita. <laughs> Reina Juanita, nice. Really, really nice because it's a, it's a twist of Rosita. You remember the, in the beginning, they asked yeah. me Rosita cocktail? So I think in Rosita... And okay. I'm going to make a Queen Juanita. Queen Juanita is a combination of uh, two vermouths, La Quintini Red and La Quintini Extra Dry. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to use Amontillado and Oloroso. So that's a okay. cocktail. So, amigos, let's go. Wait. Let's go. Hey. 11 minutes. <laughs> Good God. Hey.
Vamos, rápido. So, Rápidos. Venga. So, we are going to, we can use, uh, you know, the venencia. Yes. But in this case, I'm going to use another venencia. Don't worry. Small venencia. Okay. Is it throw? I have, I have my equipment here too. <laughs> my things. Let's <laughs> do the Latin Tini Vermouth. It's a, an incredible vermouth because in a, the one base that they use in the vermouth is Pinot de Sar. It's got the fermentation with cognac. So this okay. is the most amazing vermouth in the world. So I'm going to put 40 ml, 40, of red vermouth. Okay? Then mm. I'm going to use 25. Ah, super nice. <laughs> and look, look, I'm doing it in a style. Super nice. This is extra dry, so okay. 26 grams sugar per liter, 100% natural from grapes. Okay, only 25. Perfecto, lacking in. And then I'm going to put another 25 of Amontillado, super nice. And another 25 of Oloroso, perfect. Wow. So now, super easy. What's the idea is to Throw in a little bit, like this, okay? Okay. That I'm not going to dare to do, obviously. Okay. Yes, Laura, we have a session pendiente. Cocktail session, you and I. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What's the idea? The idea is just... I'm finished. So the idea is to put a little bit dilution and a uh -huh. um, uh, how do you say, like low temperature. But not too much because it's wine. It's a hundred percent wine. Wine, wine. From Mermut, wine from Doloroso and Sherry. And hi, Birkan. Birkan from Turkey. He's an amazing uh, cocktail master as well. So, amigos, just a little mm -hmm. the, the idea is like a, looks like a sherry wine. Wow! It literally looks like a sherry wine. Yeah, guys. Now, touch of orange. Okay. Wow, look at that. How oh, you do that? A little bit. A little bit flowers, nice. <laughs> Here. Okay. A little bit orange and this color. Uh -huh. And I told you before. I told you before. I'm going to use a big Venencia, but it's too much. Okay. So the idea is to use and this beautiful Venencia, a small Venencia. Okay with a flower, beautiful flower, and put here. But first, I'm going to use, so look at this. This is my orange flower limited editions perfume, edible okay. by Debbie Rios. I'm going to put orange flower. Well, you can imagine. Ooh, mamma mia, Ooh. that's unbelievable. And this oh my God, food. I have my orange here. <laughs> But you can use Mediterranean mandarin or bitter orange as well. And then put it. Okay. And this is the, again, it's a play, play with your guests. So you yeah. can smell on the top the orange, but then you can smell the fragrance uh -huh. from the orange flower and then taste, smell, taste is again, no? And then for sure, it's very important again the temperature. We use always the temperature, you control the temperature. It's a perfect, no? Like, uh -huh. Okay. So, and this is a Queen Juanita, La Reina Juanita. Believe me. La Reina Juanita. Perfect. Cheers. Cheers. Bravo. Bravo. Cheers. Wow. Oh my goodness. This I will try this. I will try this after the session. Sure. For sure. So, guys, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, like always. Mm -hmm. Join us. Thank you, uh, Irene. Was a super pleasure to to speak with you to speak about. Yeah, it's... I love it. So I hope that we can we can have more opportunities to talk about wines. So mm -hmm. This is my first uh, barrel that I bought in 2012 for two. Okay. Years. Similar with the the that I explained before, I put. Set uh, Pedro Simenet inside, then discard, and then I put two whiskeys, 
Cardo Talisker and Chartreuse Green, and then I create a cocktail. So this is, I love this barrel from uh, Jerez, you know, the as well, but yeah so this is a wine amazing so, actually yeah maybe we can i mean there's so many things to talk with you about uh Jerez, cocktails uh the trends in the cocktail making world and so on uh we definitely after this confinement we need to meet and we need to enjoy a glass of wine or a cocktail And actually, Laura, Laura Duran and Miguel Angel, we were talking with Laura. I was telling Laura that I need to have a cocktail making session with her. So maybe you can join and we do all together. No, for sure. Laura, please, Miguel Angel, please call me, call me again. <laughs> Guys, I told you that uh, it was a pleasure to, to work with, uh, with Laura, with all the team, with Javier Reynoso, all the people from the uh, in the Beluga competition. It was a really pleasure for me. So, and as I told you yesterday, please call me because I love wines and I want to work with wines, with Dodo, mm -hmm. and so with the Dow in the port as well. So that's, for me, that's really important that the people understand a little bit of wine war because it's an unbelievable wine, uh, war. And again, for me, that's easy to understand because for me, wines and cocktails, we... Yeah. Brothers. So exactly. The same. Great. So great. Thank you so much, David. This is <laughs> stay at home and be a strong guys. Yeah, thank you. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Uh ciao guys. I will leave the session for 24 hours. See you.